ready. Welcome to the huddle brought to you by 956sports.com served by McDonald's on Fox 2. It's our SPI Bike Fest edition. So if our hair seems a little more disheveled or our tans seem a little bit darker, it's because you missed out on the opportunity of seeing the coach Gene Garza, Dr. Greg Selber and yours truly Tony Forina on the same Harley Davidson at one time. If you did see it, please don't post the pictures on our 956sports.com Facebook page. We've had enough of that. As a matter of fact, let's get back to the business at hand. It's taking you around the Valley High School football world and what's happened the past 72 hours. Our first stop is Mercedes, where the Rio Grande City Rattlers got together with the Mercedes Tigers. And here we see Isaiah Garza running it in from 20 yards out. That would put Mercedes up 14 to 0. Matthew Guzman had a huge night of rushing for the Mercedes Tigers. As a matter of fact, 193 yards would get stopped at the 15 yard line. And Grandma McVeigh, you'd be proud of Isaiah. He would finish the drive 15 yards out. The Tigers roll to a 40 to 14 victory. Our next stop is Westlaco, where the PSA North Raiders would get together with the Westlaco Panthers. And there's the North flag crew running through, celebrating Caleb Silva. Scoring here, putting North up on top 7-0. to Now, quarterback Ryan Guerrero had a monster game, rushing for 127 yards. The Raiders' huge upset of the Wessico Panthers put them up 24-6 and set up a four-way tie atop District 31-5A. Next, PSJA, the Bears at Mack High in Thursday night action at the big stadium. Fred Hover for Mack High, he would connect with Justin Gonzalez, 30 yards out, Mack High's up 7-0, and the onslaught was there. More McAllen. Philip Cantu would snatch this one out of the air, taking the interception back 20 yards, 14-0 Bulldogs. How, and quarterback Fred Hover would add another touchdown pass. Mack High would win 45-9. DeAndre Henry, the only score for the PSGA Bears. The Wessico East Wildcats would get together with the San Benito Greyhounds, and here Saul Cuellar would get a touchdown to start the second half of play. Now this was one of these games where both defensive came to play. East would win in a low scoring affair, 14 to nine, Wildcats on top. And again, we talked about a four way tie on top of District 31 5A. Let's get the thoughts of Dr. Greg Selber and see how he feels about this. Doc, in Studio A1, what do you got for us? East came back from the dead last night. Down at the half, 12 total yards. Man, did they play great football in the second half. Proud of the Wildcats. I'm proud of San Benito because they worked hard. San Benito's got to get it done against McAllen. And you got East against Westlaco. The four-way tie, obviously, it was one loss for first place in 35A, uh, 31-5A. It's an amazing thing, and it's going to get better. That's a great way to look at it, Doc. Let's swing out to 35A action, in which we saw the Sherryland Rattlers take on the Edinburgh Bobcats. And quarterback Tres Barrera, he would hand off to a Stefan Castillo, big time 35-yard run to pay dirt. Sherryland would continue to dominate this game, this time on the defensive side of the ball with Francisco Campos coming up with the interception, returning to the 15-yard line. Michael Gonzalez would score. Sherryland wins big, 58-7. to It was the first time meeting for the Donna Redskins taking on the Robert Vela Sabercats, and the Donna defense was tough as nails early getting to the Sabercat quarterback. Now, Donna's ground game that continues to get better and better. And look at this run from Ilpidio Yanez. He runs it, takes it down low. Donna now 6-0, 4-0 in district play. And I'll tell you what, Doc, we have got uh, the Donna Redskins and the Sherry Line Rattlers each undefeated getting ready to play this weekend. What are your thoughts on that game? Well, what can you say about number one versus number two? We've been waiting for it all year, and it is here. Those were good warm-up games, and I'm sure they got physical contact and played the game. Uh, what you hope is that you have very few injuries heading into this game. Great offenses on both sides, great defenses on both sides. It's impossible to pick it. You might go with the home team. I'll tell you a little bit later what I pick, but go to the game. Hopefully the Rattlers and the Redskins will finish off the play without having to go to an extremely large field goal kick to decide the outcome of the game. 
And finally, our last big game was one at McKellen, where the McKellen Nicky Rowe Warriors would get together with the McKellen Memorial Mustangs. Javi Obregón, deep pass. He would hook up with number 82, Salazar. That's a 70-yarder. That would tie the game at 21. Obregón again. This time, he's liking his Salazar connection. 28-21 row. Memorial will tie it up with freshman Trevor Spates. He'd have a long run that would make it 28-28. There it is, and then here comes a short field goal by John Lerma, and that would give Memorial the lead and the eventual victory, 31-28. There's Spade celebrating. Here comes Lerma's field goal, 31-28, Memorial over row, and the Warriors' playoff chances seem not as bright, although no team has been mathematically eliminated so far. So, Doc, what are your thoughts on this game? Rowe is one of those teams that has played so well this year and it may or may not end up making the playoffs. It's an amazing thing. Memorial, on the other hand, gets a nice win there. Uh, that team needed that win. It's now three out of four for Memorial. Uh, they're getting the kid, Trevor Spates, involved. He's got about 800 yards now, so I'm liking Memorial right now. But in that district, as we always say, who knows? Thanks, Doc. We'll take an in-depth look at 3A action in our Selber Spotlight Coming up next, right here in the huddle, brought to you by 956sports.com, powered by McDonald's on Fox 2. Looking for a bit of indulgence? Look no further than the new chocolate chip frappe from McCafe. Every bit as delicious as the McCafe frappes you love, only this one has a bit more, wow, bits of chocolate chips in every sip. Blended into mocha and caramel, all topped with a double drizzle of chocolate and sweet caramel. You've never had a frappe like this. Better get your hands on one quick, because it's only here for a little bit. The simple joy of the perfect sip. A lot of people don't know who we are, what we do. These girls showed up when they all dressed up, and they thought it was a dance hall. <laughs> we wanted people to know that we're building materials. Lots of cash and carry building materials. People come in and they're surprised. Man, you guys have got great deals. I didn't know you was here. I mean, we've been here for over 40 years. And you thought the good old days were gone forever? We're still here. Lots of cash and carry building materials. <laughs> it's not a dance off, you know. <laughs> Everybody, today the spotlight falls on the three A's. Now I have great memories of covering those teams back in the day because when Port Isabel was really good, Lafetta, I mean everybody was tough. It was a big league with all the Valley teams in it. It's a little different now. We got two leagues, 31 and 32 3A. You know, the 32 3A guys have all five Valley teams. 31 3A has got three of ours and two outliers, Kingsville and the other one. So what I want to do today is kind of set the tone because they just started district play uh, this weekend. I've been waiting a long time for these games, waiting a long time for these teams to see what they're like. Here's uh, one week's worth of what these teams are like. Now, the teams of 32 were 10-2 and two against 31 this year. That means that Rio Hondo, Hidalgo, Port Isabel, Progreso, Laferia, they all cleaned up on their friends over there in 31-3A. Is that trend going to continue once we get to the playoffs? Because they're going to see each other again. And that's what makes this district great, is that it's like the NFL. They'll play each other twice, man. So what did you do last time? What did they do last time? There are going to be some rematchups in the playoffs. Right now, the big news from the district, P.I. had no problem with Progresso, 56-0. But Rio Hondo turned around and lost to Lafetia, 28-21, a very surprising result. Now, we're going to see what Rio Hondo has next because they've got another tough game coming up. The Hidalgo Pirates, 4-2. You know, they started with some injuries. They had the buzz over Patterson. He went out. Michael Alvarez came in. Let me tell you something, guys. Michael Alvarez, going into this week, had completed 60% of his passes. He's a good player, and if Shea cannot go or if they want to alternate them, hey, don't forget about Michael Alvarez. And I think Shea is going to be a great player. I mean, it's obvious, but Michael's a senior, and he's paid his dues. I like the fact that they're both getting into the box score. Scott Ford, well done. Uh, will they have what it takes against Riondo? This is the game for Hidalgo to come out and say, we really are good, right? Because I think they believe that they're good. I know that, that Ford's team has always believed that they're good. Beating Rio Hondo right here would be very interesting. Now, where does P.I. go from here? I believe that the Tarpons have probably solidified their uh, early season, not stumbles per se, but they didn't want to lose two games. Are you kidding? They thought they were going undefeated. But you know what? You go undefeated the rest of the way, make a deep run in the playoffs, 
it'll be just like those three A days I was talking about at the start of the spotlight. Uh, it, I, I just you know, briefly looking back on some of those games and teams, though, I'm looking for who are these guys that are playing football now in 3A that are going to thrill us like those guys did of old. I remember Josh Winky of Lafetia, 6'2", 220, a track man. Man, there used to be a, five guys would tackle him, and they'd, he'd still carry him into the end zone. It was amazing. Now, Lafetia, speaking of Winky, has to be happy right now. They resurrected their season. Oscar Salinas did a great job last night or the other night, and they beat Rio Hondo. That's big. Where does Lafetia go from here? They're probably going to have to win two out of three going down the stretch to make the playoffs, but I feel it's very possible. Progresso right now, uh, you know, they have to regroup because they came in with some good stats. They came in with a couple of wins, and they did not want to play that poorly against PI. That is a bad thing, but I expect those guys to rally when they play again. They're off. they got a game in two weeks. Now go out and reprove who you think you are because you can still do it. Nothing is decided in 3A. That's the best part. Now the 31s. You got Raymondville over there who has a nice win the other night against Gruya. You know, they got ahead real quick, they got behind, and they rallied and they won the game. I'm impressed with Raymondville's weapons. You got a lot of good backs and receivers over there. Valladares, you got Muniz, uh, Loya's a good target. Uh, you know, the fact is, they can go and score some points, 34. Gruya, on the other hand, is starting to have trouble scoring. Ray Pena Blanca is wonderful. Uh, Gruya is a little bit undersized this year. But I think that, you know, if, if they can just manage to get back to work this week and then reestablish what they want to do, then they're not out of anything yet. And that's the best thing about 3A. Nobody's out of anything. You lost one game, so what? Win three, you win the district, you're in the playoffs. Uh, Lifer has been kind of quiet these days because they, you know, they had that game canceled. I think they picked up a JV. Uh, the fact is, they want to come out and prove that the game they played against Rio Hondo was, was not the way they are. They only got 106 yards, six points. Scott Arnold is a junior quarterback for that group. The receivers are coming along, and I feel like Lifer really has a chance to make some noise. Scott Arnold went up to the camp at uh, uh, Utah and won most accurate passer award at a BYU camp. The dude can play. He needs to get more ink. He got 13, 1,400 yards. So the three A's, we're going to keep an eye on them because, you know, some of the best football in the Valley is played at those little schools, 35 kids going both ways, crazy. Let me tell you why I like 3A, because you get to be on a grass field. Praise God for that. I'm so tired of turf, and God love it. It's, a, it's the best thing that ever happened economically, but I like to watch the game on grass, and I'll go to a 3A game before it's over. You can count on that. Spotlight returns next week. This is Greg Selber. To have success on the field can't even be compared to being successful in the classroom. Our Natalie Ariola had a chance to catch up with our Wiener Schnitzel scholar athlete, Brandon Guzman of Wessico East High School. Natalie? Brandon Guzman carries his football team to the best of his ability and he takes responsibility for not only his own but for his team's success on the field and in the classroom. If we're in a tough spot, never put my head down. I've always, always, I've always got to keep my head up because everyone's looking towards me and they see me put my head down and you know they're gonna put their head down. And, you know I motivate all my, all my friends on the team you know to get their work turned in. You know I'll help them since I'm one of the leaders, I'm one of the captains. Brandon's father, and also coach for Wessico East, couldn't stress the importance of academics more. That you can never be too tough on your kids, especially when it comes to their school. You know, I feel that that's where a lot, a lot of the breakdown is, with parents don't emphasize the academic portions of their lives, which in turn will open up the doors for them in the future. Brandon plans to continue his education after high school and utilize his academic skills. I'm looking at becoming a pharmacist, probably going to Incarnate Word, because I've looked into jobs that are going to be successful over the years. Wessico East quarterback Brandon Guzman shares the same philosophy he has of life with the one he has on the gridiron. I just always look, I'm very optimistic. I don't like to look at things negatively. I'll, if I see a challenge, I'm going to try to do it. For The Huddle, I'm Natalie Ariola. Thank you, Natalie. Now don't forget, log on to Facebook.com slash 956sports and like our 956sports.com Facebook page. Over 5,000 of your friends are there. Why aren't you? We're going to take a time out, but when we come back, the coach, Gene Garza, has got our United States Air Force Air Assault Player of the Game, our United States Air Force Player of the Game, and our U.S. Army Leadership Award. It's coming up next on The Huddle, brought to you by 956sports.com, served by McDonald's on Fox 2.